All right, so I am back finally. I'm going to try to make some a uh, little bit shorter videos, see if I can manage to get more done. I, I haven't been doing a lot of videos because I typically, uh, well, I'm, I have a day job and I'm really incredibly busy, but my videos tend to be about an hour long and I know that that's not good for a lot of people out there, but uh, I don't know. You know, the videos that I watch, I like the long videos. I watch a lot of videos on, it's my, you know, television source pretty much. So um, I, I like it, but you know, most people don't. So what I'm going to try to do is keep this short and sweet. And I've already used up, you know, a ton of time just talking about this. So what I want to do today is talk about the Helix tool. So the Helix tool is under generative shape design. And uh, um, it's useful to, for doing a lot of different things, making threads. You know, you could do that um, or, or, or any kind of a spiral springs and, and such, right? But I want to show you how it works in, in kind of a couple different little nuances. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to clean up my work area, right? And so this is what, what might be handy for some of you. Some people work in a Katia. Uh, I find that when you get started with it, that, it's, that students they'll start trying to place everything exactly where they want it, and you know that's that's not really ever going to work out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you got the perfect setup, but I find that I drag the tools out as I need per the part that I'm going to make, and then I stash them back. Right. So tools, customize, go here to toolbars. Restore all contents and restore position. You might be inclined to hit this one. You want to hit this one too. This one will bring back anything that you might have closed, right? So that brings all the toolbars back. This restores the position, puts them back where they belong by default. Close that job done. So uh, now to get this thing started here, we need a couple elements first. Over here is our curves toolbar. And to uh, get this thing to work here, we're going to need a couple elements. So if I open up the helix, I'm going to move this over here too. Uh, we need a starting point. We need an axis. We got an axis. We can use the Z axis um, if we like, um, and, but we'll still need a starting point. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit a point tool right here. We're going to bring it up on the Z uh, six inches. So that's going to come up about there, zoom out a little bit, and we'll bring it over a couple inches on the Y. Hit OK. There's our starting point. Now, to do a helix, we smash this button right here, pick our starting point. Our axis is going to be the Z axis. There's the helix right there. Uh, I'm going to change the pitch to how about uh, 0.6, and we'll make the length the 6 inches that we had on the Z there, but it's going the wrong direction, so you reverse it. There you go. There's the helix. Job done. Okay? So, nothing terribly too big of a deal here. Fusion 360 has a, um, a a helix tool as well that you can do it's almost like a primitive as in like you can bring in a sphere you can bring in a, a cone you can bring in a torus right one of the things you could do there is you'll make a kind of a solid body helix right off the bat right uh, this one here seems to have a, a few more options at this point in time so let me show you what else you could do with it. So right now, over here in the tree, we have this in the part body. I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to do it a little bit uh, smarter. So if you've seen some of the other videos on um, uh, design theory that I do, I'm going to make a geometrical set. I'm not really going to name it. I'm just going to put it there. And again, I'll, put, I'll make a point, and I'll make it 6 inches up and 2 inches over. Same thing we did, but now this is stored in the geometrical set. Then I grab my helix, same thing, starting point, z-axis, spin it around, probably going to be going the wrong direction. We'll make it 0.7 and 6 inches tall. Yeah, okay. There. Okay, now I'm going to put a plane on this curve, right? So it's just going to be this right there. So we got the normal to curve, which is, uh, which is the helix. And my preference is to take this and stick this right at the end there. Okay, done, done, done. Now, we're gonna bounce out of generative shape design. We're gonna go over to part design, which is in you know a lot of formalized training. You'd spend all the time learning in generative shape design. Then you take a class on part design. Well, probably the other way around. And then maybe you go to a different one. The reality is that you take your part and you bounce back and forth between the different work versions that you want. So I come over here and I wanna work on this plane, but I don't want my sketch inside this geometrical set. So I'm gonna define part body in work object. I'm going to come over here, hit sketch, click that plane, 
and I'm just going to draw a circle, right? I, I can't snap to that point there. I'm just going to, here, I'll show you. If I wanted to, I would put it over here and click on the background, hit that. Control select those things. You can do it either way you want here. Get constraints, right click, hit coincidence. There you go. I right? put a dimension on it and you're done. So I'm going to exit out and I always click on the background. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to when you're new. I always say click on the background so that you don't accidentally select something and come over here and, and, and you know, pick something you don't, do something you don't want. So I'm going to pick rib. And then I'll pick that sketch, and I'll pick this thing to follow, and looky, looky, there is our spring. So that's pretty much job done as far as creating a helix, right? If we want to do a spring or something like that, this is it, right? Now, if I wanted to, I could change this to, say, some kind of a triangle. Say I already had a shaft going through here, uh, a cylinder. This could maybe be a triangle, and I go look at my ISO or ANSI charts to find out what the pitch, thread pitch, is of the fastener that I'm going to use, and I could draw this triangle by hand and make my own threads. Uh, you guys that might be using Fusion, SolidWorks, or whatever, here's the one of the stupid things, I guess I'd say, that uh, Katia doesn't do is they don't allow you to put threads, visible, visible threads on something, right? So you would end up having to make them yourself, right? So anyways, I'm going to leave that like that, and we'll say that that's done for that. But now let's go and uh, change things around a little bit. So I will go back to Generative Shape Design, and instead of this whole setup, I'm going to get rid of... Actually, I'm just going to get rid of everything. I'm going to go to my geometrical set and go here, and I'm going to draw a shape instead of just putting a point on here. So um, to kind of start this, I'll just pick a spline and I'll get up here about so far, wobble this around, call that good. Put it up about there. Okay, sure, this looks probably fine for what I'm going to do. So take that, now that we have this profile, this is one of the cooler things you can do with the uh, helix in Katia. You can pick it, and we pick our point like we are going to do before, and our axes is our Z as well, reverse the direction, and I want to bring it down to here. I didn't actually measure it, so what I can do is I can come here and I can say measure between. I'm going to pick that point right there, and this plane right there. Okay, so that's that, and hit OK, so that adds it in there. If I want to edit it, I can. And the pitch, I'm going to make point, mm, last time was, yes, uh, 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 point 0.7 was pretty good before, I guess. Hit OK. Now, here's what I had before. Starting point, axes, everything's the same as it was, you know, length and pitch, you know, whatever, right? But you can come down here, and instead of having this, um, incidentally, I can do a tapered angle. Here, let me show you that really fast. Look at that. So I can taper the angle, and that's neat. I don't really use that too, terribly too much, but you could, right? Like this. And um, see? Or I can pick profile, right? I can pick the profile tool, and I can pick, or profile profile selection and I can pick this edge and look at that it will wrap around the helix to match the profile here and this could be very cool you know what you do with this you know it, it's really cool to have this option and I think it's really neat uh, having a 3d printer this this prior to 3d printers this wasn't anything that was very useful to me you know all the time but you could make a really interesting shape, make it out of a spiral, as you'll see here in a second, and then 3D print it, right? So I'll hit that. Good. Done. So that's that's a pretty cool pattern here. Now I will again add a plane to that helix, right? And put it right there on the end. Okay, done. We're in this geometrical set. Now go to part body, define that in work object, and I go here, pick sketch go here and we'll make a circle again about there and again realize if you see me kind of moving real close there it does not snap to that point you'd have to constrain it I just want it kind of close enough hit that 
it's already selected so now I'm going to jump over oops oh, I'm gonna jump over to part design and hit the rib tool it's already selecting the sketch it's already there my center curve is right there and boom look at that so that is a pretty cool trippy little shape I, I thought at one point in time this would be my uh, you know killer product I was gonna make it was going to be uh, vases for dried flowers how about that right so you print this thing out here and you can put your dried flowers it looks like a vase but it, it obviously is not so there is that from from here on out you know you could add a base to this to get it to stand up nice or it could just be a spring or whatever you know if the thing bounces around too much you could add some supports yada 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 right so one last thing one last thing I want to do to this so let's say it is uh, a little bit back in time we didn't have 3D printers or better yet say I wanted this done like this but I want it out of metal so I, maybe I got myself some eighth inch rod here and I want to wrap this around something so I need a mandrel I need something to wrap this with because otherwise you know it's gonna be pretty hard to try to bend this all into shape right so I came up with this idea another you know one of the products you know, thinking like how, how could I make this uh, so I need to um, I need to create a solid out of this. I'm going to borrow this sketch for a second. So I'm going to make a new part body. So first we're going to insert a body, and then I'm going to right click on it, go to body and object, and say change to part body. This is cool little tip. If you didn't know this, I'm already using part body. I'm going to do a boolean operation here in a minute. I need to assemble all this. Oh, bad word. I need to aggregate all this into part body in a second, but I can't have anything in part body right now. So I changed this blank one to part body. Ask me if I really want to do that. Yes, I do. Now I have a blank part body again. Body one is now the one that I just did with the rib and such. Now I can go here, insert another body. If you do body in a set, I could do this and I could call it mold. That's all body in a set is. They could have just called it named body. So I hit this and then I go to this plane down here, same plane basically that I made that sketch on. Go here, take this, project it out, done, and then uh, draw a line. So I, I could reuse that sketch except for the fact I need this. I need that right there. Uh, no, you can't hit L for the line tool, sorry. Hit that there. Did I get that? We'll find out in a sec. Okay, so I take this, and then I'm uh, going to shaft this around the z-axis, like so, and now I have that. So I have two separate bodies. This concept goes across all different CAD programs. Uh, they are not, it's not an assembly. There's not two different parts here um, that we could assemble together. They are not actually joined together. They're just two parts occupying the same space. All right, so for right now, I'm going to hide this geometrical set. And then body one, I am going to go to properties, and I will change this to green. And then the mold, I will change to yellow. This is pretty much the standard uh, thing in uh, standard colors I use for contrast. If you go to, uh, I forget where it is in Fusion, but there's a thing in there you can um, just auto kind of contrast everything. So now I have the mold right here I have the body right here what I want to do is a boolean remove I'm gonna remove the spiral the helix from the body there I could go to body right here and I could say remove from mold that would be the uh, the not, not best practice way to do this what you're supposed to do is this the better way to do this is I take mold the one there and I will add this to part body so I add that in there then body one right here I can go here and I can say remove from, it'll do it automatically because it's the only one left, remove from part body and look what we get. Now granted there's a couple little dealios up here that you probably want to get fixed up and down there as well. That's easy to do. You take your helix and kind of add a little leg onto it and you know kind of whoop it up there and get it out of the way. But there you go. So now this, this could be a product all on its own. Maybe that was your end goal that you want to have this you know funky looking shape. Or I figured once upon a time I could do something like maybe put another shaft through this, get a hold of this, put it onto a motor or have somebody help you with a crank and you could heat up a piece of, uh, you know, the, the piece of eighth inch uh, rod and you could use this as a mandrel to wrap it to 
um, you know, how you get out of here is a little bit more complicated. You'd have to have a centerpiece that comes out and have pieces here and have it all fall apart. But anyways, that's how you could do that. And that's all I wanted to show you here. By the way, up here in part body, the reason I added them separately is I do not have one body inside of the other. They're both separate if I want to take them out or do anything with them else later. It would be easier to do that. So one more thing I want to show you. So we're, we're back to this. We uh, have it colored yellow where it's our regular circle uh, profile following the helix just as it was. And everything seems to be fine. But what would happen if we go from here, this, and we'll change it over to an ellipse. So we'll draw an ellipse here uh, about so big. We'll make it kind of skinny for effect. Move it over about there. Again, not worried about constraints. And now watch. So when you pop out of this here, when you make this, right now, this is, this is not the helix. This is the rib tool itself. And so by default, it's set up to keep angle, right? So all you have to do is you have to go from keep angle to pulling direction. The part that's kind of confusing for some people is maybe as a rule of thumb, think the pulling direction should be a plane that's perpendicular to the axes that you're spinning it around, right? So if we come down here, and we pick the uh, uh, XY plane here, hit that, right, there you go, and hit OK, and everything falls out the way that it's supposed to, right? So that's pretty cool. So now, if I unhide the mold, there's my mold right there, and we'll do the same thing we did before, add this really quick over here to part body, and then we'll take body one here that's got the rib itself, and we'll remove it from part body, and boom, there is our weird looking shape thing. Okay, so that's the Helix tool and, um, and a couple other little tricks to do with it. So thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.